So, let's close the door and it's ready, 2 o'clock. So, hello and welcome for today's short seminar talking about GYHM650 uh, regarding new firmware version 3.0. Well, uh, I guess or I assume that one of the camera which you see here in front of me is one of yours already or you have an idea to purchasing them or you are a dealer and you want to know what is going to change on the version 3. Oh, well, um, in the previous seminar I already explained how you do a firmware update. So this is not an issue for today. So we're talking today only for the difference in case of the features. But there's one comment at the beginning before we're looking about it, is when you have done the firmware update on the 600 or the GYHM650, uh, there is one thing which I always recommend after this firmware update, and i like to show you that quickly into the menu item. Uh, let me switch to the camera itself, to the menu surface. Let's go to the menu point. And let's go to system at first. I'm going to scroll down <coughs> to the end of the there where is the system. There is a sorry, is the system information. First of all, you can see the system information. I'll go make it a little smaller. And then you can see. Let me do an an expose on this image. Hold on a second. So okay. Uh, that makes me a little bit easier. So you can see here the firmware version. This is the it calls Faust 3004. Uh, that's actually the version 3.0 firmware. And uh, this is information on the system menu which you see here above. But what I recommend after the system setup, please do a reset all at first because there is some mandatory changes. Uh, mandatory changes into the camera and maybe some memory is stucking on the old uh, firmware setups so it's always better after a, um, a new firmware update that you say reset all of course you have to input your, your connection data for example if you want to do live streaming and so on on a 650 maybe you have already some connection set up after a firmware update, I always recommend it do a new connection setup, even if it's stored into the memory, just to make sure that everything is correct. Okay, after we have done the reset all, you have completely new function on this camera body. Well, um, let's go to the menu service and let's talk about what is new. Okay, uh, let me give you this image and this image. Okay, so let's start at first without the features which you have in the GYHM HM600 and also in the GYHM650. Let me close the front. Let me shut down the front iris manual operation. Off. So, okay, let me close the lens. Here we are. So, we're starting with the features on the 600 and the 650. So, both cameras get this, this kind of new features. Actually, it's like a new camera. The first issue is autofocus system. So, we may give them a complete new autofocus system. We spent the camera, the 600. And the same autofocus system which we have on the 800 and 850 and the 890. Let's go to the menu point. You press uh, the main menu. Go then to the camera function, and we scroll down to go to the autofocus setups. This is right right here. So what you get at first here what you see here is the autofocus speed which says middle and when we enter it you have slow and also fast well some customer customer ask well the autofocus should work always as fast as possible 
But frankly speaking, this is not true because it's depending on the, on the shot which you make. For example, in case of sport, you need a fast reaction. In case you do personal shots or portrait shots, then it's maybe better to use slow adjustments. Or even you are in the church by a wedding and you go between the rows with the camera. If that is fast, so for example, you have an empty space and there's a person here and the next person is there. So the camera starts to move like this to prevent this, maybe the slow setup or the middle setup is one of the better uh, system to work in such kind of image shooting. Well, automatic is an automatic and could not always uh, find the best point. So we give you now a choice to make a selection which shot you will go in and then you can set up your autofocus system or your automatic system to the best value. But there's something, something more which we have here, it's called autofocus assist. To use the autofocus assist, of course, you know the standard autofocus assist from every camera. When you push autofocus, you get the blue or the red lines, and you can see uh, the details of the focus. In this case, on the 600 and the 650, we have also the expanded focus, which uh, zoom up the image 1.5 times that you have a better focusing in case of HD shooting. I like that much better than uh, as the typical focus assist with the blue or red or green lines. But here we make some additional things in case of auto focus mode. And this we call area, sh area uh, assist. Let's switch that to area and then let's see what happens. So if you have your norma normal shot, and I like to give you the uh, side image from the cam camcorder here. Give me a second. <coughs> oh, let's do this. Okay. And the other way around. So, okay. So you don't need to see me, actually. What I want to give you is this image. Okay, and the camera image. So you, you see what I do here on the top corner and uh, the black image, what you see right now is the normal imaging. Let me open the iris a little bit so that we get a little bit image. So we are now in the autofocus mode. You can see that uh, on the screen. Uh, maybe I can show it rather here. You can see it's autofocus and there is a nice marker which select, okay, we are in the area mode you get this kind of information. What does it mean? Please keep in mind you go to a wedding photography and not in the church. You go outside and you have a nice shot and you want to do a typical portrait shot of the nice girl with the wedding and you normally take the golden rule of shooting. That means the girl is not in the center of the screen. It's a little bit right or on the left. But in the background, you have a lot of details. For example, you have nice trees, green trees, and so on. But there's a lot of details. So in that moment, the autofocus really don't know, should I take the center information, which are the trees and all the things, all the tiny things, which give you uh, a lot of detail. And the autofocus can work uh, very good on this. But the girl is in front, and it's not in the center. So now the autofocus doesn't know where it really should work. For this, in the case you have switched on the autofocus mode, you know, this normal focus ring in case of autofocus makes no sense because it's fully automatically. So we make it a little bit special here. So if you take the focus lens and you want to change the area setting, in the moment it's center, you can see that actually here. So it mentioned you, this is the center. And when I move it, you get a cursor. You see this is center now. And when you move it to the right, it's the right area. So when the girl is more to the right, the autofocus take care more on this position. And you can see that on the nice cursor here, it's going to the right. The same in the other direction. I move the lens in the other direction. Now it's back to center or it's back to the left. And you see, you don't have to push anything in the menu. It's just take your finger on the front ring and just move it. So this is center. This is more to the left. You give the position where the autofocus should work. And when you start to zoom, of course, it falls back a little bit to the center. As soon you stop, it's going back to the right. 
So we guess this is a nice feature. If you select that on, it's easy for the operation. You don't have to press anything and you just simple use the front ring to select where the autofocus should work. I guess this is for everybody uh, understandable. Okay, let's go to the next item. Next item is also a uh, feature into the menu, into the menu of the camera body, which gives you an external SDI trigger. As you know, we have on the camcorder, we have the SDI output here is a 1080i, up to 1080i output, depending on your system setting. Maybe you have the idea you want to have an external recording system, a third party product, whatever, and you want to do start stop. And most of these third party products uh, have a choice to make an external trigger. Yeah, well, you can do that over the time code, you can uh, uh, do that over the LANC uh, protocol, but also it's an embedded signal in the SDI output video signal. And this is the new function which you allows now to give this kind of signal over the SDI. So you're going into the menu, going into the AV set. And when you are in the AV set, you go to the video set and scroll a little bit down. There you find the new feature which is called SDI trigger. But I set it on. When you press record, a signal will go out on the SDI line here. Uh, and it gives you the, the choice uh, to have the signal. Okay, let's see. This is the SDI output for a third party product. So if you set SDI on, so will the trigger signal will be follow up there. Okay, this is another feature. Um, next one is a little bit uh, more complex for to do understanding, but um, in case of recording, if you use SDHC cards based on the system, on the file system, uh, that every four gigabyte of file, the file will be split in a, another file. So for example, you're going to continuous recording, but every four gigabyte, the file is split in the next file. Well, you'd not lose anything uh, about it. So you uh, just, even if there's no audio, audio gap or something else, if you take that to the NLA, file A, file B together, so this continues, there's no drop, nothing between. But this is a needed because it's a file compatible issue by doing editing or something on the SDEC card that every four gigabyte, this has to be cut in the next file, in the next file, in the next file. Well, in case of SDXC card, XC card, uh, I have the, the benefit that you have more uh, capacity and also the file format on this card is different. So if you don't want to have a split every four gigabyte, which is normally no problem, you can have create also a long file without having this uh, four gigabyte splitting. In the theoretical terms, you can create a file with a 64 gigabyte up to four hours is one single file. Yeah? Otherwise it's split. It. But this is only in the case of SDXC card. Uh, let's have a quick view where you can find this in the menu. You're going to the system menu, going to your record set, going down and then you can see here for gigabyte spending on the SDXC card. When this is on, then it, uh, the files are handled like normal on an SDHC card. That means every four gigabyte automatically a new file is created without any loss between. If you switch that off, set to off, then of course, then you can continuous do recording but that works only in case of the SDXC card. Another uh, new thing which you found here is the recording in Dictim folder. Well, the DCIM folder file, uh, most people who handle uh, normal photo cameras, uh, everybody know this file format because it's typical for imaging. But this has some 
compatibility reason with Apple system. So if you want to create a file, immediately you want to play back that on an Apple iPhone or whatever, so then it's needed that you switch this DICM folder on that makes your file recording compatible with a file structure which is handled in Mac. So if you switch that off, then you have normal file regulation handling. Normally you NLE with support, but you cannot play back, take the SD card and play it back on such uh, other device. Maybe the file will be not, not find. So you have to do a different kind of video player to use that. That is only a feature which makes it more compatible to Mac systems. That's all. Uh, one uh, important issue, if you use one of our um, SRD, uh, let's say 2500 or SRD uh, 1350 or the new 7, 1700, which are the Blu-ray recording system, and you do a recording in MOV file, then it's absolutely necessary that you switch that off for our our camcorders. This is a special mark, you know, when you download uh, the firmware 3.0, there is a readme file in and there is an explanation uh, for this uh, situation. But this is only the case when you want to use the MOV file in case of one of our Blu-ray uh, Blu disc um, recorders to burn Blu-rays or DVDs. Well, one of the top highlight actually on the new feature list, uh, which makes you a brand new camera, is the expanding of the recording capability. Well, I'm running here on uh, 1287 and 20 p 60 because I have some PCs running here to make the whole system compatible. But now with the new feature setups, you have new recording system, which is really great when we go to our recording set and going to the record format and let me do my image a little bit smaller so important is we give you the capability to record in H.264 with 50 megabit which gives you a better image performance than any MPEG 50 megabit recording system actually they did because the codec H.264 with 50 megabit has more efficiency, makes smaller files, but the image quality is uh, really better than a 50 megabit MPEG. Anyhow, uh, there are some limitations because, you know, this is an add-on for the camera. So when you do the recording, now you have the possibility to record in 60p, 50p in H.264. You have also the capability to record uh, in 25p, 24p, so uh, 30p, there's a lot of, a lot of big band, bandwidth with the new uh, H.264 um, recording stuff. There is one, one limitation is, of course, the camera needs more power and they need the capability of that one. So if you want to record in 60p or in 50p, which gives you an excellent image performance, then you cannot do uh, uh, web operation like live streaming. This is not possible because we need to, to do these resources. So you, you are in the system menu, which you see here on my left. And then, you, for example, you can go to the MPEG-4, you can go to your setup, you can go to 1080, and then you can select up to 30p, 60i, 24p, etc. But we have to change from MPEG to H.264. Uh, H.264 allows you in also to record in 35 megabit. You can have 50p in HQ. And also you can see you can have that in 60p recording. So here's your new recording sets. Of course, I will not change because then I lose the imaging here. So keep in mind what you have to do to reach these values. I go back, I will not change. There is one thing what you have to do at first in case of networking, the network stuff have to be off. That is uh, one, one important issue uh, to allow the system to record in 60p. Well, if you want to do live streaming, live streaming has the capability 
for uh, 720p, uh, 25p or 30p or 1080i, so there is no 50p or no 60p. So your whole system, of course, needs to be changed anyway then to a standard resolution to the 50i or 720p 50. So that gives you, a, I think, a really big benefit. You get an excellent uh, also camera option to record in 50 and 60p. The output, of course, uh, this is a software update and the hardware supports you here with that kind of recording in case of playback. So you record uh, 60p or 50p 1080. Of course, you still can have a playback here, but of course, this is not a 3G output. So you have 1080i output when you do a playback. But when you take the file out, going to your NLA systems, of course, then uh, it's, uh, of course, 1080, 60p or 50p. Well, it's uh, so far the most things. Uh, there is some updated also for the 650 users. And for the 650 users, I will switch back to the network operation. I put the network on. So what we have new for the people who have the 650 in addition, that is the new live streaming rates. Here, for example, we have 1280, uh, 724, there is 1080. I will mentioned to you to you that verbal so we have uh, additional live streaming rates uh, with the 60 protocol which is built in as you can see that uh, quickly here in case of live streaming you get the 60 protocol you get the rtsp protocol in addition to the standard udp as you have before and also you have now the streaming capability from 200 kilobit up to 8 megabit, depending if you use UDP or TCP or RTSP. In case of using 60, of course, there is some limitation of the bit rates. In 1080i, 2.5 megabit. In 720p, up to uh, 3 megabit. And in SD, of course, you have the bigger bandwidth up to uh, 3 megabit from 200 kilobit up to 3 megabit. So that you have all the streaming capability like on the 800. So if you want to have more details regarding the new streaming cap capability, you can have a look to the previous seminar of the 800, 890, because now this camcorder have the same capability as the ENG shoulder cam, new shoulder cam uh, camcorder from us. So both cameras have the same capability right now. There are some other improvements uh, for the system, uh, for example, for the time code, etc. Um, but it is rather a little bit difficult to show that here. So that is in the detail list of that one. So what you get is a new features. Let me summarize this quickly for you. Again, you have a complete new autofocus system, which have a speed selection. You have the error detection left and right. You have the external trigger function in that. And um, we have the four gigabyte spanning. So you, in case of SD XC cards, you can have one single file very long. Uh, we have the dictum feature in case to make it more compatible to a normal uh, Mac device, like an iPad or something like that. We have integrated the new completely recording features or codec which allows you to have very high quality H.264 50 megabit recording and in also uh, with uh, the support of 50p and 60p. A lot of people already ask me why this camera not have 50p or 60p recording for 1080p. So, well, it's there now, which I promise, and it's all free of charge. So if a customer wants to have, he has the camera, please make an upload. If you're maybe too shy to do it, please go to your dealer and ask for help to do the firmware update. It's easy, it's easy doing in uh, about 15 minutes you have to done the update. And again, uh, there is an explanation how to do the update on our web seminars videos already. 
So first of all, you have the the people who have the 650. They have also the new streaming capability with UDP, which is already there, but um, wider range, 200 kilobit up to 8 megabit, and also you get the uh, ArcGSP uh, protocol and the Sixty protocol. How? What is Sixty? What is ArcGSP? This is also a previous seminar already. So if you want to know more about that, please have a look to the to the website uh, before. This is something which I before we end about here with the camcorder. I want to have a quick view to that page because I made a, a slightly change here on the website and um, give you a short explanation. We have here the DOC download on this website and you, when you click here uh, you can see normally there is a, a button which you can go ahead for the download area and now it's blocked. Uh, for you, this is only when you are already joined the seminar and you have done a login so that you see, for example, the video right now, which is running here. You can go to the uh, to the DOC download here and then now it's open and you can download. This is just a little bit more secure as for us that not everybody can pick up the files there. So if you are registered or you have a password from us to join the seminar, with the same login, you can do any time. You can go back to the page, even there is no webinar running. Make your login, then you open the DOC download, and then you can find there uh, all the video and the seminar data. And uh, this video is also record, so I put it on the web uh, uh, very soon. Uh, now we have a national holiday here in Germany on Monday, so I guess maybe next let's say latest Thursday it will be here on the website for downloading this seminar of today.